It is now 8.57 a.m., November 9th, 2018. Yesterday I was talking about the word goo, G-O-O, -O, and it uh, stemmed off of me talking about the Evergreen College mascot, which is a gooey duck. And then I talked a little bit about the song Goo Goo Muck, but I forgot to talk about one of the more important goos, which is Google. So that's something that I should do. But what happened is I also wanted to give an update on the news and some of the things, the disturbing things that I see in the news, which I think are connected to mind control. So I sat here and I did this and the sound got turned off on my recorder. So all I had was a screen recording, which is not as important as the audio recording on these because I can always add visuals later. And this is not the first time this has happened. Um, and I also discovered yesterday that a, uh, another file had been deleted from my archives of evidence, photographic evidence. Now, yesterday when I started talking about goo, I also started talking about Toby Bale. And my experience over the past five years is that when stuff goes missing from my computer, it's often connected to her somehow. It just, I don't know if it's, I don't know why or how she pulls it off. Well, I think I know how she pulls it off, and I think she pulls it off through the police department. So I'm going to start talking about Toby Bale a lot more until we understand what exactly this woman is about. Um, before I do that, though, however, I want I wanted to go back and redo what I was trying to do earlier, which is to talk about the news. So after um, I made this on November 1st, I made a bunch of videos uh, involving me re reading entries from my journals from 1988, and including journal entries having to do with Bridges and Minneapolis, and the college where I was going at the time was Hamlin University. And in the midst of me doing that, a girl for, who was essentially from my hometown, she was from the neighboring town of Bayside, which is where one of those mountain lion attacks occurred in the, my videos about the mind-controlled mountain lions. Um, her last name is Simpson, which is the same name of the timber company, which owned 80% of the Yurok Reservation in the 80s and early 90s. Um, she was going to St. Thomas College, which was a sister college to my college, from 1988, which was Hamlin. She was in Dinkytown, where I lived. She was in an apartment called The Bridges, apartment complex called The Bridges, and she fell 10 stories to her death on November 1st at 1 a.m. So that's 1, 1, 11, 1, the 1st, and 1 a.m. So that's four ones in a row right there. This was obviously, to me, just by the whole setup of it, a mind-controlled incident, and it was directly connected to the stuff that I was reading and talking about in my journals. And this is what I was talking about when I talked about the Pink Floyd video for Welcome to the Machine. It's this planned genocide, and a recent dream told me that it was a Nazi program that the United States has adopted. So this is where we're at right now. And I'm also fighting off back problems and neck problems and all kinds of other symptoms that are being caused by implants and beam weapons by the medical industry. So the medical industry, when they hurt me, when I'm trying to talk about these things, basically they are saying that lining their pockets is more important than stopping a worldwide genocide. Because uh, money is going all around in this. This is vastly, deeply corrupt and it does involve the federal government. So anyway, all of that happened and this video got deleted. So now I'm doing a backup in which I have a backup, excuse me, I have a backup recording device and hopefully we'll get this one done. So what I wanted to say was about mid-October when I was getting warned in various ways that this, you know, death machine was coming that it was going to get bad, these twin killings, and um, these killings connected to me and my journals and whatever else they connect them to, that it was going to get worse. A couple incidents happened, but I didn't see them show up on my news feed until after November 1st, after the incident with Joya Simpson. So I want to actually look at these in incidents. I don't want to let them go by. One was had to do with somebody being found 
an employee of Joanne Fabrics being found dead on the job. They didn't know how he died. So this was September 26th. And I didn't see this reference in my newsfeed until about November 2nd. So September is 9 and 26 equals 8. And I I'm, I'm still don't know how this person died, but Joanne Fabrics is a store that you know, I've frequented a lot over the years. So, not sure what that's about, but that showed up in the newsfeed with a bunch of these other um, stories that I know were connected to mind control. More disturbing is this one. Where did it go? So here's a big fat ad for what is this, Game of Thrones? This is a very, whatever it is, Game of Thrones is troubling to me. This is probably equally troubling, this um, glorification of medieval violence, which I have to watch until I get to this story about the grandmother who stabs her baby and bakes it in an oven. And this is where we get all this from, I guess. These crusades and, you know, ill-advised European expeditions into, you know... <clears throat> It's just, it's beyond fascination with violence. It's like, um, certainly glorification of violence. It's fetishization of violence, I would call it. And we see it all the time in Hollywood movies. And I don't know about you, but I actually would like to see less violence and more good storytelling, you know, but I, it, maybe it just sells. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't sell. Maybe it's just part of their mind control program and maybe they're just paid off behind the scenes to do this. I'm not exactly certain, but definitely Nazi connections there. So, how do I get to the story of the baby that was dead and stabbed and placed in an oven? So, this is a 20-month-old girl, like a toddler, really. This is a toddler. And it was on, I believe it was October 16th. And see, now my, my um, computer is slowed down a lot. Now, what I've discerned is that... Um, Toby Vale is very connected with the police department, not just in um, Washington State police departments, but also the police departments in Portland, Oregon. And I'll explain later as I continue to talk about Toby Vale until something is done about her um, and whoever she works for. I'll continue to explain the connections that I see with her. And um, I think that she's a very devious person. I think she's mind control raised just like me. She's a year younger than me but she's extremely devious and that's how she was trained that's how she was programmed it doesn't make her unaccountable for her actions it doesn't make the police unaccountable for the actions that they take on her behalf but it means that you have to really look out for what she says and what she does and look at the look at the um and this is true of anybody involved in this creepy game that they call it you know look at their words, look at their actions, look at their words, look at their actions, and we need to take it all the way up to the top. We need to take it up to the President of the United States, the Senate, all of these guys that, you know, preach family values that are in the back room raping children. And yes, they do do that. I mean, there's evidence. There's, there's, a, there's a trail of, uh, you know, speakers of the House and who knows what, you know, involved in child molestation. So this is not people making this stuff up. This is really happening. It's, this is the child that was burned, stabbed, and then burned in an oven. Royalty Floyd. So there's a lot of little clues in here. One is the fact that it occurred, and, and my computer has been slowed down now. Now, this is also happening to me a lot. It could poss it's possibly the software, but I don't think it's the software because I don't always, it doesn't always slow down when I use QuickTime. It slows down, I think, when I'm being slowed down by <clears throat> external forces who I believe are the police or people connected to Toby Vale and her crew. So this child is named Royalty Floyd. So royalty is a clue right there because Chris was descended from royalty. M possibly me too. So the royalty is a clue. The um, fact that it happened in a place called Shaw, Mississippi. Chris lived for a while in Mississippi as a child. Shaw is the last name of... Um, a friend of mine who I mentioned recently in a journal entry, his name is Jimmy Shaw. He's the last person I saw with Brett Bowman when Brett Bowman was alive. 
probably the last time I saw Brett and Jimmy was together in 1987. And um, he was in that dream, which I read yesterday from February 13th, 1988, riding a bus shortly before Brett was hit by a car. Um, so what the family's trying to do is emphasize how much they love the child and here's the thing about it that I was trying to get to that I think is so important and that it makes me very upset that anybody would actually have just uh, sabotaged my attempt to actually explain this so Veronica the child's mother defended her own mother who has been accused of the heinous crime I'm being told that my mother stabbed my daughter and baked her in the oven but my mother loved my daughter she always treated royalty like royalty and everybody knows that knows us knows that so there's a GoFundMe in hopes of covering funeral costs. So what I see are a lot of similarities and links between these killings that seem to be mind control killings. And there's a link here with what happened to my brother-in-law, Timmy Thompson. And that link is that the person who stabbed Timmy to death was said by his family not to harbor hatred towards Native Americans. However, the night that Timmy was attacked, Timmy and Thunder were attacked, what I'm told is that he, this, uh, the attacker left a message on somebody's voicemail saying he was going out to kill some Indians. I was, and another report says that before he stabbed Timmy, and then Thunder, he called Timmy an effing Indian. Then there is also a report of people talking about crazy Indians chasing them, which seems to mirror another dream that I had in 1990 or 91, where I'm in a parking lot, which is where Timmy got stabbed, in a parking lot, and two twin Native Americans are banging on a trailer or something, and I say something about I say something about them being crazy Indians, which is not the way I normally talk. It's not a phrase I would use. But it was echoed during the incident that happened to Timmy, also in a parking lot. So there's another case of my dream predicting something that happened. And in fact, that dream was unique also because the day after I had that dream, as I note in the journal entry, and I've, I've read this on video and I'll upload it, I actually saw the two people from my dream at a poetry reading the following day. And, you know, it made me feel afraid for a minute because I had seen them, you know, they were these, you know, murderous, dangerous people in my dream. And then the next day, I, these people I'd never seen before, I saw them at a poetry reading. This was all around 1990. Now, years and years later, here my brother-in-law who's Native American gets stabbed to death and then someone else is stabbed so two Native Americans are stabbed in a parking lot and people are yelling about crazy Indians mirroring my dream that was a mind control incident the person who stabbed um, and killed Timmy and who stabbed Thunder appears to me to have been under mind control and he should be tested for frequencies also this grandmother who killed this child in a most heinous fashion who was said to have loved her child also needs to be tested for radio frequencies to radio frequency based mind control so if she has a transponders in her body like I say I know these things can be turned on and turned off but I always find at least some signals when I test my body for transponders so I don't know how easy it is to switch them on and off but to my way of thinking, okay, I know and understand that in a defense attorney's duty, as far as I know it's their first duty, is to, is to defend their client to the fullest extent that they're able under the law. So from my perspective, and I don't think this is out of line to say this, if these um, defendants, Veronica... Uh, Veronica's mother, I don't know if they say the name of the mother. Is 
it Carolyn Jones or is that the photographer? I think it's Carolyn Jones. So if Carolyn Jones' attorney does not test her for radio frequencies, because I know that people know what I'm saying. Even though my YouTube views are low, I know that my stuff is being distributed in, in covert manner on covert servers, the cloud or whatever you want to call it. Okay, if, if these people's attorneys do not trust test them for radio frequencies, they are negligent. That's negligence because they're not mounting the best defense that they can. And the best defense would be to show that this is a mind control killing. So this goes for the attorney, for the woman who killed this poor child under mind control, most likely. Look at how this photo of her, and there's a pillow. She's on a pillow, and the pillow says warning on it. I think pillow is, um, and she's actually pointing with her right hand to her right shoulder and right cheek. This is a coded photograph. And even the reflections in her eyes seem like they might be coded. This is a coded photograph, a pink bear hat on her head. So w once again, as I've said before, the journalists know what's going on. So I can hardly imagine the attorneys don't know what's going on. The attorneys need to get a bug detector a high, wide-range bug detector, and they need to run radio frequency tests on their clients. Otherwise, they're negligent. So that's true of the defendant of the person who stabbed and killed my brother-in-law, the grandfather, and the person who stabbed and killed this baby, her grandmother. If the defense attorneys do not test their, their clients, the defendants in these crimes for radio frequencies, the attorneys are negligent. Now the other thing that I want to address in this period is this image right here. So I dreamt of this image last night before I saw this image. And I dreamt of it in a different way. What, the dream appeared to me to be was answering a question that I had had after watching some of these old Mickey Mouse cartoons and seeing that sometimes Mickey Mouse is portrayed look at this pulsing arrow that's a hypnotic thing right there I'm gonna I'm gonna just put a screenshot over the top of it because we don't need to be watching that um, Google needs to get out of the mind control game and if you're going to stay in the mind control game, Google, you need to be overt about what you're doing. You need to talk about what you're doing. You need to explain what you're doing so that you're not uh, inadvertently throwing people into trance states so they can be easy, more easily victimized by this. Okay, so goo is in Google. So Google's already advertising that they are part of this, you know, game, twin game thing. Now, maybe if the tragedies start happening, I'm not advocating for this, but maybe if tragedies start happening to people at Google, maybe they'll wake up a little bit. But uh, the tragedies are going to happen until this game is brought to an end. And Google, by including triggering images and hyp hypnosis in their imagery, is not helping things as far as bringing this to an end. Look at the bottom part of her glasses. It looks like the reflections in this girl's eyes. See the C-shaped reflections? It's like four C's. Three, three. C is the number three, right? It co corresponds to number three. Three, 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 three. This is a very coded picture. It's not just a little bit coded. It's deeply coded. Finger pointing to the right shoulder or the right side of the neck, depending on what you think, or the cheek. C, C's in both eyes. It stands for 33. A pink hat with a bear on it. The bear is something that they use to talk about us. So it's, the bear's even only got one eye, in fact. Um, bear, California bear flag. Um, the warning on the pillow. The Grateful Dead bears. And her bottom part of her glasses reflects that. So, in my dream this morning, okay, so my question was, see, I'm having a lot of blocks and even trying to talk about this and get it out, but my question was, was why you sometimes see Disney and other types of cartoons and things like that where the shadow, the person is raising up their arms and maybe bending their head down and you see the shadow behind them and it looks like two arms but you don't see the head. It's like the head isn't there and I thought, is this um, a reference to somebody losing their head? 
And in my dream, I saw this similar shape, and it's echoed here on this piece of wood, which I didn't see before this morning. And what the dream told me was that it was an inverted baby, like a baby hanging upside down and essentially burned black like a shadow. And it also reminded me that on the 1st of November, one of the dreams that I had read about had to do with me frying a baby in a baby pan, in a baby in a frying pan, um, to try to bring it to life, but then I overcook the baby and I burn it. Now lately I've been burning stuff a lot, uh, especially milk on the burner. It seems like it's something that I'm sometimes triggered to do. So over the past several days I've had this habit of just absentmindedly putting the milk on the stove and turning it up to high, which I normally wouldn't do, and then leaving it until it burns black. So I think that's mind control. I think that's me under mind control. So in this in this dream that I had in the 80s, which I read on November 1st, I was the baby in the frying pan was actually my brother and I was trying to cook him and he turned black. So like charcoal black. So in this image that I had in my dream, it was telling me that the the symbol of the shadow with no head and just the arms raising up is in fact an inverted baby. So then I come to Google and I look at Google and what do I see? I see the woman holding a piece of driftwood that looks exactly like that, pretty much. Almost exactly like what I had just seen in my dream. She's a wood carver. I mean, you know, there's logical reasons for this, but that's not what's important. What's important is the actual imagery. She has these strange little symbols on her shirt that look like... Oh, and here we have this. And there's her, her surgeon's tools, right? I'm not going to get into the video. Um, the symbols on her blouse look like the symbols from the chariot card. The ch symbols on the um, cloak of the chariot. I don't know what the word for that is. It's not a skirt, but it looks like a skirt. And then she's got these little bears crawling over this um, piece of wood, this, her carvings. But again, there's the bear symbol again. So again, there's a lot of symbols that coincide to this photograph. There's the C's, the bright C's in the eye, the bear hat. So here we see the bears also and the C-shape under her eyes. And then there's also the phallic imagery here. As you can see, there's a, um, a point in the middle of this and this little baby bear crawling up to it. So that's the pedophilia image right there. And then this little bear is sitting in a fork of the tree. Also, you know, like legs or arms raised up. So if this is an inverted symbol with bears crawling over it, then of course this is a phallic uh, pedophilia image as well. So without getting too deep into the specific, you know, there's the curls and all that stuff. Without getting too deep into the specific imagery of this particular video, I feel that one of the things that I should address is Native American participation in causing problems for me. Uh, and not really big problems, mostly it's just been um, almost like keeping somebody, keeping me away from, you know, pursuing the things that I had been interested in pursuing while I was in high school and things. And um, I just can't bring myself to um, blame people for that. First of all, it's the Native American families who are getting massacred so badly. It's my daughter's, you know, father's family who suffered the most deaths as a result of this BS. Um, there's just no way that you can, I mean, I just don't see any way that you could possibly um, place the blame on Native Americans when um, they were blindsided by this stuff essentially, you know, 150 years ago or so, give or take. I mean, and certainly were deceived. I mean, it's so obvious that how 
much they were deceived back then. And w what I need to do really is talk about the patterns behind this game. Talk about how incredibly deceptive the people are who set, set up people uh, in this process. Um, so when I say the people, I guess I mean the people who call themselves the elite. And the only reason they are, you know, as far as I can tell, the only reason they are elite is because they are descended from, perhaps they're descended from royalty, who were royalty, the way royalty worked in Europe, as far as I can tell, is the people who are the most vicious and ruthless are the ones who got the most land and the most stuff. So it's just, it's just a pattern of ruthlessness that's been carried through to this day that has not been checked by the institutions, has not been properly checked by the institutions that we created in this country to check stuff like this. And by check, again, I mean keep it in check. I don't mean put checks on it. I don't mean put a checkerboard on it. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is a big, as far as, you know, putting blame on Native Americans or any other person of color, any other per colonized nation, who's forced into situations, that's a big fat nothing. There's nothing to, there's nothing there. All there is is genocide that people are coping with.